Ho Chi Minh. Actually, I'm I'm a no go. I but, don't give two flying fuckities. I'm going. What you want? I'm going to the gym after this. Okay, don't be a little bitch. <laughs> My wife might drink it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she'll drink it. It's Antiquity Blue. She likes Antiquity Blue. Does she? Yeah. It looks like breasts. This does not in any way, shape, or form. No, The eye holes make them look really weird. Like, I think you should take this home and use it for intimate times. Cosplay? I think your wife would really appreciate that. Because <laughs> sex with Shah Rukh Khan. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. Some Corbett. I thought you were. I, I thought she was gonna wear it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, today we got a this just dropped it's actually uh, a behind the scenes of Darlings oh cool uh, they just dropped this Meet the Darlings um, obviously uh, if you haven't seen a review of that you can go watch that we enjoyed this film um, but yeah apparently did I don't know how in depth of behind the scenes uh, it is right if it's a montage it's, kind of thing it's or five it's an actual 50 so who knows let's just get into this to tell a mother-daughter story where the one-line idea was that the mother and daughter want to set the daughter's marriage straight. They wanted to change the husband. Ah, they just answered my question. I always wanted to talk about the message of violence against women. I wanted to tell it as a dark comedy. I approached Red Cherries with a script and we went to Alia. And Alia connected with it. She also came in as a producer. I think Darling speak to me as its first film to be produced. It was a very big decision to make, to be like, what is your, going to be your first film to produce and all of that. Absolutely. But it very naturally and very casual. I absolutely love the script, but I didn't like the part. <laughs> it's super entertaining and brilliant. I fell in love with it, and there was no going back to it. So the film is based in Baikala and Mumbai. People in Bombay, because we, I think, all dream big. And sometimes it doesn't happen. And I think all four characters represent that. So Alia's character is Badrun Issa. She is in love with her husband, Hamza. The marriage is going wrong. But she has so much hopes that he will change. Hamza, on the other hand, he genuinely loves Badrun. But he feels like he's entitled to be dominating and mm-hmm. abusive towards her. Mm-hmm. Shamshun Asas is a protective mother. She is obsessed with her daughter's happiness. She believes that men like Hamza can never ever change. She believes that her daughter should just leave him. So Zulfi Bichara, he wants to become a writer, but he didn't succeed. And now he's selling secondhand goods to these women. <laughs> And these women bully him all the time. And he has a real soft corner for them. And he really wants them to be happy. Baikla has this cosmolingo of Urdu, English, Hindi and Marathi. We started writing dialogues. And in the first few scenes, there are a lot of S's that we kept adding. And it started developing so beautifully. Now this lingo is mostly for Badru. So Badru has this thing of like adding an S to every English word she knows. She won't say sad, she will say sad. She won't say thank you, she'll say thanks you. The title has an S, we darlings. So we thought it would be a fun thing to carry people. Hmm. Nice, thank you. Interesting. I was wondering why it was darlings plural. <laughs> Every time there was a funny scene, we would just crack up. I think it's just fab for the film. 
Shamshu, my favorite character was the, even when I heard the narration, I was like, oh my god, who's going to play this character because it's so important and so important to me. Enter Chef Ali Shah. Ali and me are working together for the first time and I think we have great chemistry. You do? Yeah. Vijay is extremely professional considering he had to be tied up a lot and really tortured and he was really not very comfortable with most of the film. He was a total sport. <laughs> There's a great deal of regard that I have for Ali as an artist. I've never worked with anybody who comes with this kind of an insight about the story, about the character. Ali and Chef Ali and Vijay, all three of them, I've, I've seen their work on me and I really like their work. Roshan is one of my favorite characters. Again, on paper, Zulfi, he's such a sweet, innocent boy who's trying to help but he's stuck between these two bad women. <laughs> These actors are fab, not just uh, not just Alia, Chef, Vijay and uh, Roshan, but everybody else. I think I got my dream cast. I'm very happy. You yeah. should be happy. Every, everybody did a great job. Working with Jasmeet is, is sheer delight. I don't know. I've never seen her lose her pool. She gets the job done. She stays very focused and all of those qualities <clears throat> I really like. She has an insight of the relationships of the characters and she's open to your ideas and suggestions. So she really is very good with making the moment come to life with all these real details. I think she's done an extremely special job and this is just the beginning for her. See, I think every film should say something. Every film should have something important to say. This film did. And if you can tell it in an engaging, entertaining way and not preach, I think that's the best way to tell a story. Hmm. That was good. I, I thought of a question I'd like to ask the next director or actor we talk to. I'd like to know if the last shot before wrapping for the day is called martini in Indian cinema. Why? Well, because it is here. It's the last the last shot of the day. Oh, the martini is shot. Is the martini shot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I sometimes, you know, if you're on set, you know that we're going to wrap really soon because you hear them say martini. So I didn't know if that was part of the vernacular there. I wonder and, what the history behind that is. I, I, uh, the... <laughs> People had martinis. The other th exactly, everybody. Yeah. When they were done filming, they went and had martinis. Uh, the other thing I saw answered my question is: so many times you see films and you, you realize, okay, this is set in a in say you know a, a, a home in Mumbai or Kolkata or Delhi, and you're like, how did y'all do this with real sound and not have constant har horn honking? It's because that place was built in a, in a soundstage. It was full green screen. Everything. So that apartment was controlled atmosphere. It that'd always be a helps. Good, that'd be a good question for a director. How often do you have to How be, often? Be, because of the state of uh, just going out in India. Yeah, the And noise. the sounds of the, the people and the, the horns. It and, only helps when you want it. But when you don't want it, like especially filming, like if you're filming something like Delhi Crime that takes place in Delhi, how much of your interiors are you doing in sound stages because you just cannot get sound. Yeah, and... Like people be like, oh, it's it's great. They already have that there, but then if that's there in the background, you can't hear your actors. Correct. And it's not you don't have consistency. You always want to be in control of your sound. Absolutely. Um, it's and, bad. It's bad enough trying to film in Los Angeles. I can't imagine oh, yeah. what it's like in the cities in India. Cause yeah. it's just horns just everywhere, nonstop noise. Also, like they they don't. I feel like close down sets as hard. I mean, I know they do, but like. I always see like so many people watching a scene or watching like on, yes. on the streets. Like they close down streets, obviously for depending on the budget. Depending of the on film. what they're doing, uh, but obviously, especially if it's a big budget thing <laughs> here in New York, we, the streets will be closed down. Especially, obviously, if it's like Marvel, because then you get spoiler stuff. And, exactly, and it's all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. that was for for behind the scenes. That was very good. That was good. That was that. That was very satisfying. You got to hear some insight. Yep. You got to hear the actors and the director talk, even the writer. Yep. Uh, t talk about different things. See some of their table read. Uh, even though I, the montage are good, but obviously, I always much more enjoy like the in depth. Yeah. I mean, because if you're like us and Indrani 
was very much of the same ilk because she was with me for all of the filming of the short film that I just did. Oh, was and, she? But all she did was just sit around. When we're, I was like, are you okay? Are you okay? And it was, of course she was okay. She's an artist. So she loved just... I don't know how you cannot love being on set and watching the process of every craftsman and craftswoman that is involved. Yeah, craft from, services. Yeah, from craft services to... The to best artists. Makeup, lighting, continuity, uh, the, the relationship, just watching the setup between shots of, of the relationship with the director. It's so funny to watch. This is the case in most scenarios where you have a cinematographer who really wants to do something and the director just says no. Because the director is the one with the primary vision. And so I the cinematographer is like, what, babe? I have a huge amount of respect for what I saw the cinematographer <laughs> of. Because of just setting up the lighting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like how intricate it is. Like you oh, know, every I, nuance. I never got to understand. And now when I saw behind the scenes, like what goes through, I'm like. Yeah, so you have the cinematographer setting up a shot, and he, the cinematographer, he or she wants it a certain way, and so they say, "What do you think about this?" I, I think if we tilted it up, and the director says, "No, I don't want that," and that just you see the biting of the tongue, and the cinematographer just submitting to the director's wishes. And there was this one point where our cinematographer, who was fantastic, that happened, and we were really behind on. We were like a couple hours behind on our shooting schedule this one day, and he he wanted to do something, and we didn't have the time. And I saw it all over his face in private. He puts the camera down, and he's setting up the shot the way the director wanted it. But in his head, I see coming out, my name is on this thing. It's going to say cinematography, and it's not going to be the shot I want. And <laughs> Yep, it's so true. T t a lot of times, if you've never been on a set, you, like those are the two very close relationships, but also probably the two most contentious, contentious. relationships uh, on set. They often have a love hate relationship for each other, directors and cinematographers. That's why they're just, usually if you have one, they always, always work, work with another because they found somebody they can like usually exactly work with. And and you also see like on a set. How it's a family. It really is because you're you're with each other all the time. Families yeah. are with each other all the time. You have the best of times where you're celebrating, things are great, and then you have the worst of times where you're pressed for time, people are disagreeing, somebody's angry at somebody because they forgot something. You're like, okay, where is that sandbag I asked for 30 seconds ago and it's not here yet? And your patience is running thin because it's you're getting tired and you're running out of battery and it's it's beautiful, beautiful collaboration. Yeah, it yeah. is. So that's but, why we love behind the scenes. That was great. Yeah. Uh, so let us know what other videos we can react to down below. Just